Mark. You have a name that carries many meanings, like an area of space having a different color from its surroundings, a symbol indicating a record of something, a lifelong friend, an inquisitive student, and a voice for the speechless. To me, he was brother. Throughout the years, we laughed, we argued, we hugged, we cried, we drove all around, we were close, we learned from each other, and we went our separate ways. But no matter how much distance came between us, I always knew who you were, a brother, forever. Although our relationships with him may vary to different meanings, one thing reigns true. Mark loved you. You felt it in his smile, bright and gleaming. Or in his strong embrace, so tight you could feel that big heartbeat. And most of all, you could see the love in his eyes. With eyes as deep as the ocean is vast, Mark looked upon us with a love that time could never outlast. As we look upon these pictures, holding on to his image, it's the memories we shared that will carry on his legacy. A quote from a book Mark once told me to read, but I had already read, and he just liked to tell me to do things. <laughs> <laughs> from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler. The adventure is over. Everything gets over and nothing is ever enough, except the part you carry with you. It's the same as going on a vacation. Some people spend all their time on a vacation, taking pictures so that when they get home, they can show their friends evidence that they had a good time. They don't pause to let the vacation enter inside of them and take that home. So while we glance upon the photos that reflect good times past, Remember that our brother Mark lives on through every beautiful sunset, the meaningful music that we listen to, and every tight hug we continue to give each other each and every day. We love you, brother. For those of you who don't know, I'm Mark's friend Holly, um, and thank you so much for letting me speak today to the Bay family. I just wanted to say thank you. And I know a lot of us are probably familiar with the quote from Maya Angelou, people will forget what you said, will forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And I, like everyone in this room, I'm sure, will never forget how Mark made them feel. And it's what I remember more than anything when I think about him. I think about the feeling of joy more than anything else. Oh, so much joy when I was with him. A lot of people took my lines already, but the feeling of laughter, always the feeling of laughter until we cried, and just love and endless friendship. He connected with everyone he met, as evidenced by everyone here today, and it wasn't just because he was endlessly charismatic or comedic, but just because he loved everyone so fiercely. And he had such special ways of showing it, like cooking for his friends and family was definitely his love language. <laughs> if you were lucky enough, Mark would have came to your house one time, looked through your refrigerator, found the last three ingredients you had left, and still be able to whip up the most amazing meal you could ever imagine. It was amazing. I, I think about his kindness and his small acts, like making my mom a homemade birthday card for her birthday, or how he came to my college graduation and yelled at the people standing in front of them to sit down, always ever so vocal, just to make sure my mom could see me walk across the stage. <laughs> but burning mixed CDs of his favorite songs for all of our friends so he could share them with us, hiding in our cars before first period in high school because we quite literally thought we were too cool for school and didn't want to go in. I think about all of us walking home from school, cutting through the baseball fields to get back to his house, Everyone just laughing and what a carefree time it was. Caitlin driving us home in her old silver bug and him belting out, oh, what a night, and Bohemian Rhapsody at the top of his lungs. 
him always making an effort to rush to our weekly game night on Friday nights and it never being complete until he showed up because no one's humor could compare. How when he finally got a new car after Benson, which if you don't know, that was the first game of his first car, um, and he made me just come over and sit in it and listen to music because he was so excited to have it but couldn't drive it yet. Uh, something else I'm sure we all remember is Mark's never-ending random facts. Always, always the intellect. I feel like he literally probably could have won Jeopardy. Um, I remember us driving down the 57 freeway heading to the beach, and if you guys know where the hills are, like in your Belinda, the trees grow out of the side of the hill and him going, isn't gravitropism so cool? And I'm thinking, yeah, sure, whatever that is. <laughs> What she then told me is when trees go straight towards the sun regardless of their position, and I just remember thinking, who even knows this stuff? <laughs> Mark did, he knew everything. I think about what we dressed up and performed as Ryan Seacrest and Taylor Swift for the school rally, and when he danced in front of the whole school at the King's Ball rally like the true king that he really was. I think of his laugh, his smile, his beautiful singing voice that I miss so much, his rapping skills, especially Macklemore, I can still hear him in my mind singing, I'm gonna pop some tags. <laughs> We'd sit on my living room bed and she'd give a whole concert for my mom every week and she'd listen patiently. Uh, I remember painting my room together, bike rides, birthdays, watching fireworks from his roof on the 4th of July with his family, beach trips, hikes, concerts, museums, street fairs, taking pictures, forcing him to be in those pictures, which I'm so glad I made him do now, although he was always so annoyed. <sighs> Driving around aimlessly just to find a good view of the sunset. He made the mundane meaningful and beautiful. He was an artist, a photographer, a comedian, a chef, a poet, a music lover, an animal lover, a nature enthusiast, an empath, my best friend, one of the loves and lights of my life, one of the most brilliant, kind-hearted, special, spirited, sarcastic, hilarious, genuine people I've ever met, and there will never be enough words to describe him. There really is no one quite like Mark Bailey, and never will be. And I'm so blessed to have known him and call him my friend. I love him and I miss him. I hear him in my favorite songs. I think of him when I look at the mountains that he loved. When I see the vibrant colors in a sunset that I know he'd be admiring and photographing, and when I stare out at the ocean, I saw him write once that heaven is on a beach somewhere, and I just hope he's waiting for all of us watching the waves. Thank you. Remember of Marky. 
and piling into his first car Benson and bumping Nicki Minaj while we looked at the Christmas lights yelling at the top of our lungs. My individual experiences with Mark are the ones that I cherish, mo cherish most because we had a very special bond. He and I, we always agreed that we were kindred spirits. Each time we reunited, we would run at each other with the biggest hugs and we'd hold on tight. We didn't want to let go. We had the same sense of humor, love for nature, and artistic interests. Because of him, I was able to really investigate my passion for photography and have him cheer me on the whole way. I even had the pleasure of photographing him for some art shows and I, I hold those images a little tighter now. During the family gatherings that we didn't get to spend together, I saw him shine through his brothers. To this day, I see the intelligence and wit through Daniel, and sassy sense of humor and grit, and the kindness that's in Kenny. Even in his passing, Marky is always with us, and arguably, I felt him with me more now than I ever have, because I now feel an ambition to live the life for both of us, because we were so close in age. Every decision I've made since his passing, I've considered his sense of adventure and what he would do when provided the chance to be spontaneous, but also be mindful not to be as mischievous as he could be. <laughs> Lastly, I want to share the last memory that I have with Marky, and that was at the last Christmas get-together at Bill and Paula's. And as soon as I arrived, I saw that all of my cousins around the age were in attendance, and it was one of the best turnouts that we had in a while. And I just bolted towards him. I had the best hug. I held on to him for what felt for minutes, and we just cried. And it is something I'm going to hold on to forever, as I shared so many coupled moments with him, just us on our own, and together with the cousins, as we always had. And it was just reminiscent of us growing up together, as we always have. And I left happier than I could have ever imagined after that day. I thought about it for days. I called my mom. <laughs> I told Bill and Paula how happy I was to be with him. And it's something that I now get to hold with me as a memory, my last memory with him, and it's a beautiful one. So I promise to to be by him, but do good by him. Yeah. Thank you. Everybody, my name is Tabitha. I'm really happy to see. I saw so many familiar faces, but just so many faces. It's like, look at this turnout. He would be mortified by how popular he was, <laughs> but he'd love it. <laughs> I met Mark first period of the first day of high school. 13 years old, with his Bieber hair and his skinny jeans. Already, he exuded confidence and warmth. Everybody loved him because he made them feel special and included. He'd do anything for a laugh, make up a song to cheer you up. I keep thinking if you were here, you'd find a way to make this all funny. I don't know how. I have so many memories of him then, memories that many of you share. Mark cooking dinner in my kitchen. Mark making me my first alcoholic beverage, a Bailey's milkshake. <laughs> Mark finessing coupons and demanding I feed him McFlurry as he drove. Mark planning our graduation camping trip to Leo Carrillo, in which none of us were cool enough to even think about trying to bring alcohol. Years of handmade birthday cards and Skype calls and letters. Out of the blue, the occasional I'm okay thinking of you texts. We were kindred souls and tethered to each other. He was my best friend, my first love, which is unfortunate because as we know, I was not his type. <laughs> <laughs> And it all used to feel so humiliating, right? Like, I, I loved him and everybody knew. <laughs> but I'm really grateful for that now because I remember everything. Because the years I spent in that all-consuming crush, I, there's, there's just nothing more laser-focused and meticulous and insane and forgiving than a 14-year-old with a crush. And I spent those years memorizing his laugh and his profile and his voice, belting Death Cab and Ocean Avenue out the window of our shitty cars. No offense, Benson. <laughs> I'm grateful because it turned into an unconditional friendship built to withstand. I am bereft without him. Like a light has gone out in my life. 
and I don't know how to talk about him in a way that does him justice, so I'm just going to talk to him one last time. Mark, you are complicated. You are hard to hold on to, but the easiest thing to love. So much so that you are overwhelmed by how beloved you were, and I hope there were moments when you could see why you deserved it. Time with you passed syrupy and slow. Life with you was golden, glimmering against the sea. You saw life in sunstreaked afternoons, hand-drawn cartoons, a perfectly filtered camera lens, pages and pages of batshit crazy poetry. It isn't fair that we don't get to see what you could have done with a little more time. But I can't help but think that you'd feel like you got your fill. Even with that ferocious appetite, I'll always remember you singing, don't fix my smile, life is long enough. I hope it was. We are all better for having known you. We would keep each other's heads above the waves no matter what it took. We could carry on knowing there was always another afternoon, another hand reaching out. Your voice is still wilting in the back of all my favorite songs. Your next witty comment is still on your lips. Thank you for everything. I have so much more to say to you, but I'll save it until we meet again. Things we lose have a way of coming back to us in the end. I'm not always in the way we expect. So remember him, the spectacular being you had the frustration and pleasure to know. Find him in the things he loved. The sand you track into your car when you leave the beach. The light dappling through the leaves of a tree. The purples in the sky. The peaceful blinking stars and planets out the window in the passenger seat as he's driving you home. <laughs>